Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Oh, I just made this cup of coffee. It's so good. <laughs> Do you guys have your cup? You all ready to go? You ready? Good morning, Keely. Good morning. I hope you guys had a uh, great weekend. It was beautiful here in LA. I got a chance to do a couple hikes, so that was really fun, kind of diving in. Good morning, Kristen. All right, Tiffany is here. All, all the people. Oh, good morning, Lori. Everybody's here. Good morning, Helen. Oh, all right. So, uh, yes, thank you for the hearts. Love it. All right, so today we're actually going to... Good morning, Ivana. Uh, we're going to talk about empaths and clairsentience. Good morning, Renee. Good morning, Rachel. And we're going to talk about the differences because last week, if you remember, we did the uh, car. Remember, we were all in the car and I was talking about protection and things like that. Well, you know, and how to protect yourself on the road and from all that energy, right? Well, this week, we're going to kind of talk about how to open up to that energy to feel more. Good morning, Browning. Good morning, Mallory. Good morning, Cheryl. Good morning, Stephen. Nice to see Stephen here on time. <laughs> um, all right. So let's kind of go through this just a tiny bit, okay? Now... Intuition. Intuition is the gut feeling, right? Just the natural gut core feeling. There's not really thought behind it. It's just the core gut feeling, normally kind of associated to danger. Not always, but like a inkling. But it happens right in in right here. See? Look, I even wore my my special shirt to show you. All right. So that's where your intuition kind of hits. That that gut feeling. Now. If we take that a step further, it becomes clairsentient. Now, here's the thing, because some people get confused, I think. They think intuition is clairsentient, but it actually isn't. So intuition, gut feeling, everybody's got it, all right? Clairsentient is when you kind of add logic to it. So clear, uh, clear feeling, right? That's what psychics use. So... You know, when we add those clairs, so there's clair seeing, right? And clair hearing, clair knowing. But that clair, that clear, which makes it the psychic part, why someone says someone is psychic, is because they're actually adding logic to it, an extra sensory to it. So it's like those heightened feelings, those heightened emotions. But today, we're going to talk about you being an empath. All right. So how many of you feel you just feel other people's emotions, you feel other people's worry, anxiety, and sometimes you may even think it's your own. You don't actually may not even recognize it's someone till a little later. Right. So you get it. So let me know if you feel if you're kind of that empath where you can feel. OK, Kristen does. You're feeling other people. Julie does also. Um, Melissa does also. All right, so you're in a crowded room. You're feeling a little overwhelmed. You're feeling a little overwhelming. There you go, Lori. You're feeling a little crazy. Sometimes it's hard for you to be a lot around a lot of people, all right? Um, because you're empathic. You're feeling the feelings of other people, yes? So when you're feeling the feelings of other people, you're hitting your, your clairsentient. You're hitting, so that's not intuition, right? In, it's really that clairsentient. You're kind of connecting it all together, right? It's a heightened, heightened vibration. Well, normally, so Helen can feel other people's anxieties, and yes, you too, Sean. So normally, right, most of us are, um, we always talking about how to protect yourself, how to shut that down, how to kind of uh, create a box for you to be in so it's not quite so overwhelming, right? Well, today, I'm going to take it in a little bit of a different direction. Today, I'm going to actually ask you to spend a day opening up to it. I know. <laughs> You're going to need to go to bed early. Just know that. But, you know, in today's day and age, we are, we are not allowing ourselves to feel as much. We're shutting down. We're desensitizing. 
right? We are, <laughs> Julie's like, no, yes, because we're desensitizing, you know, we'll see sad stories and we'll just kind of block it because we don't want to feel that pain. We don't want to feel what someone else went through, but the more we can open up our clairs, the more we can open up, the more we can actually kind of increase our vibration, the more we can connect more in our own life or connect more to spirit, connect more to one another. We've gotten so afraid of connecting to one another that we are shutting down and then wagging fingers at people sometimes or making judgments or just not allowing ourselves to feel the pain of a sad story. So some ways that you can do that is uh, watch the news. I know, and we're always talking about, um, you know, don't watch the news. Turn the news off. It's drama, right? Yes, it's drama. Yes, it is. But there's a lot of stories in there that will really allow us to tap into that clairsentient, tap into that inner empath of us, tap into the feeling, opening your heart, okay? So it's like opening your heart to feel, and that's tough. That's really tough because when we open our heart, we're becoming vulnerable. We're allowing ourselves to get hurt in return. Um, but w in order to really build ourselves, to make ourselves our maximum possible potential, we have to be willing to go to that place. Okay? So watch the news. Um, read Yahoo. Yahoo's fantastic for some stories. And when you're watching it, um, everyone share. Oh, thanks, Julie. Every, she's saying everyone share it. But when you are um, allowing yourself to feel, to feel the story, to feel the emotion, to kind of really get in there, you're opening yourself up to a whole new level. And you're really exercising that clairsentient muscle. Um, the only way to build our connection is to exercise the muscles, okay? Exercise those clairs. So today we're talking about exercising, yes, 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 uh, exercising um, our, our clear, our clear sentient, our clear, our clear feeling. <coughs> um, so watch the news and feel it. There are times when um, I'll watch something and I'll just start crying because I'm allowing myself to feel that sadness or that story or the happiness. Mm. And, and that's what we can do. Um, another thing to do is practice with a friend is psychometry. I'm sure you've all heard of psychometry, but if you haven't, the idea is that you take an object of uh, someone else. So it's someone else's object. Hopefully someone that, <coughs> excuse me, that you don't know a lot about and you hold that item and you just start feeling it. You start feeling, are there any feelings around it? Is there anxiety around it or joy around it? Is it a good memory, a bad experience? What is that experience, okay? Um, if it's a, a, an engagement ring, don't go right to the obvious that it's a happy situation, right? Really allow yourself to get a little gritty with it. Get a little into it, but really start giving what you're getting around it to see if you're right, to see if the person can validate. It's a great way to tap into that clairsentient. Another way, now this one is a little harder, but, oh good, I'm glad you like it, Shelby. Another one, which is a little harder, is to go to an antique store. Um, because, ah, oh, there's so much stuff and so much energy, as you know, right? Crazy energy. But you may not get the validation. So, you know, you can feel the uh, emotions and feelings and experience. You just may not get the validation. So you just have to kind of trust yourself, trust what you're getting, trust what you have. And try to keep a little pocket journal with you. Anywhere, just keep a little journal and write down the feelings you're getting, the emotions you're getting. What are you hearing about the experience? Because it is good to kind of get it out. If you keep it in your head, you think you'll remember it and you won't. Okay, you really won't. Another one is to listen to an old song. Okay, so you know how this goes. Come on now, don't 
I want you to fess up with some hearts here. When you've broken up with someone and you start listening to a song and you become obsessed with the song and you listen to it over and over and over. <laughs> there you go. I know it. I know it. I've done it. I have done it. REO Speedwagon has gotten me through many a heartbreak. <laughs> Um, you know, you lost that love and feeling. Um, so anyhow, what you want to do is <clears throat> really quick, Julie's saying, just be careful what you bring home. Energy sticks to things. Well, Julia does, but then you just take your Himalayan salt baths, like I talk about to kind of get rid of that energy to wash it through you. Right. Um, I'm validating that the fountain is off. Yes, because it will make too much noise during it. Live REO. <laughs> I love it. So, all right. So what you could do is go back and listen to one of those songs. Go back and listen to one of those gut-wrenching songs. Good morning, Shanice. Go back and listening to one of those gut-wrenching songs. Um, and see if you can tap back into those feelings and emotions. Tap back into the place you, oh, jagged little pill. Oh, God help us, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so anyhow, so what I want to do is, you know, it's, you have to practice these things. You, you know, how are you going to build, you know, all of you are saying how you're worried about being haunted, worried about the energy sticking to you. How do you expect to build the clairsentient if you don't dive in? Don't, you're, you're using fear as a way. Remember, everything comes from love or fear. Use the love of connection. This is not all negative, right? It's beautiful. Use the connection of love versus fear. You're not going to pull in negative. I mean, you may have a bad feeling or a negative, sad story. It doesn't mean you have to hold on to it. It is then about releasing it, being responsible to say, all right, I'm going to let this go. But you have to be able to practice, right? Um, just practicing in someone's class sometimes isn't enough. Practicing in the real world, reconnecting with another human being, connecting on that heart level, connecting on that soul level, using your clairsentient to say, I feel you. I feel that sadness. I feel that someone hurt you. I understand that. It's us reconnecting to one another. Okay? We, 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 it, we, we can't be afraid to do that. All right, even if social media allows us to, let's kind of try to not shut down. Um, so in that practice here, this one, look, I don't know. Do you see them? There you go. They're both in spirit. Just going to let you know. They are both in spirit, okay? But what I want you to do is just feel it. Don't try to connect to them in spirit. You don't need to worry about that. Just look at these photos and tell me what you get. Just write it out. What are the feelings you get about them? What are the feelings you get about their personality? Anything you get what they were like. Anything. So just start sharing it and I'll let you know if it's right. I'll say yes or no. But it's a, just a little play time. little play time. Allowing yourself to play. There you go. Come on. Tap in. Tap in. Twin souls. Yes, Shelby. I would agree with that. Absolutely. Love and loyal. Absolutely. Oh, God, Kristen, this black one is so energetic. I could barely, barely contain myself. I, I mean, really, he gave me such a run for my money. Roll in the grass. Yes. Uh, this one actually would lay in the grass in the sun and refuse to get out. <laughs> yes. Lots of love, Shanice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Keep going, you guys. You're doing great. Anything else that you're getting, just go ahead and share. Tap into your feeling. What is your feeling saying about them? Gray, spoiled, black, enjoying life. Yes, yes, absolutely. I think they did. I think they did. Happiness and love, yes. Yes, absolutely. There was a lot of love. The one on the right is uh, action, reaction. Is that this one, Richard? Is this the one you mean? Uh, Julie, uh, black. Yes. Okay. So Kristen, that's Julie says black always gives kisses. Yes. Here's what's interesting. Um, this one always gave kisses. This one, I had to pull his fur out to give me kisses. Whenever I would take his uh, undercoat out, he would give me kisses. Yes. Very mischievous. This one was the boss 
and he always went along. So he was always getting into things and figuring out. One with the bell, putting his head down in a playful way. Yes, red collar. Yes, Richard, exactly right. The one on the right is so, oh yeah. This one, this one, I'm telling you, he was energetic. He was definitely a little more uh, timid unless you were a tiny little animal. So there you go, right? I mean, how much fun is that? It, you know, that's fun. And last one is, yes. So, you know, and, you know, just by you guys sharing it, it like le it's like, oh, my God, yes, they were that way. Yes, they were. So I am the boss. Oh, he was. He thought he, he was the boss. So you can do things like that. It's playful and it's practicing and it's allowing ourselves to connect. And sometimes that connection is pain and sadness and sometimes it's love and uh, bringing two things together. Either way, um, kind of keeping our emotions on one side of the barometer is not natural. We're meant to feel all emotions. And when we can give ourselves permission to do that without the fear that it will destroy us or bring us down or stick to us, then we can actually really lighten that up, really pull in and raise that vibration. And you are going to see how much it really does help you in your own life and your work and your family and your friends. And that doesn't mean there won't be times when you do need to put up that protection block. Absolutely, there's going to be times when you need to. But this is what I'm talking about is just allowing yourself that freedom to feel. The freedom to feel. All right, you guys. Well, there you go. That's your uh, coffee with Colby for today. And thank you guys so much for sharing and playing. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I uh, can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. Oh, yeah, David G. So um, I'll try to remember it tomorrow. But tomorrow at 10 a.m. So just so you know, you know, this is going to be tough. I won't have the regular coffee with Colby at 10 o'clock tomorrow because I have David G on live with Colby Psychic Rebel. So it will be right on this page, right? But David G, this guy is amazing. He does like these meditations and he's, they're incredible. You can actually get them for free or you get them on his website for a couple bucks, but they help you through everything. I mean, they have helped me so much. I listen to them most nights before the, uh, before I go to sleep, but they're fantastic. And I I'm so lucky to have him on the show and he's going to talk to us. He actually has a workshop coming up in LA that we're going to talk about. So tune in tomorrow. And anyhow, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Love you so much and have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye you guys.